Hello everybody, my name is Oliver Sennhauser and I will have a look at MariaDB connection ID together with you in the next few seconds. First, a few general words about connection ID. So MariaDB connection ID exists since very long ago. So it's not really a new feature, not really something which is spectacular. But nevertheless, I want to talk a few words about connection ID. So first, before we start, let's have a little demonstration. Uh, I'm here on the bash. I run the following command in the MariaDB client. I just do a select from connection ID and you can see how connection ID behaves. So connection ID is 38, uh, sorry, is 83. I do a connection again, connection ID becomes 84, 85, 86, 87, 87. So we see, we see the trend when using a connection. So every connection inside a MariaDB database gets its own connection ID, which is a unique number which is continuously increasing. The maximum number of connections which were created since database startup you can see easily with the command show global status like connections and you see here in this case we had already 2322 connections since database startup. So technically this is quite boring so why should we bother because with the connection ID, you can do some interesting investigations. Uh, a few uh, words before we start diving deeper into the connection IDs. The name connection IDs is unfortunately not clearly used. It's ambiguously used. So connection ID, the first is the ID of the connection, but then also the thread ID is sometimes used for the ID of a connection. This typically happens in the information schema. So sadly, they did need not use the same term here. Then in show process list, there is a column called ID. This is the connection ID as well. And then in the performance schema, we have the connection ID again, but here in the performance schema it's called process list ID, but it's still same connection ID in MariaDB. And then we have something different, the thread ID, which is the ID of a MariaDB thread, which is not 100% the same like a connection ID, and sometimes we have to do the calculations between the connection ID and the thread ID. So be careful, especially in the performance schema, to not mix up those two uh, things, those two terms. So where is the connection ID used then? So where can we use it or see it? First of all, in the process list. Here the connection ID is called ID and if you Check the connection ID, you see there a column called ID. I have renamed it now in this query to connection ID. And you can easily filter out all the rows or the row which is your personal connection. So you can see all the other connections with this select command on the information schema process list. Alternatives to this information schema process list select commands are the command show process list or show full process list or you can also query those information from the performance schema here you find everything in the view threads so where else can we see the connection id um, in the InnoDB monitoring which you get with show engine InnoDB status you have various information about the state of InnoDB um, one status is the latest deadlock you have received in your database or in your application. And here you can also see the connection causing this deadlock or the two connections 
which were involved in this deadlock. Unfortunately here it's called again thread ID. Here thread ID 7765 has had a conflict with 7778 and caused a deadlock. Nevertheless both are MariaDB connection IDs. Where else can we see the connection ID? Again in the InnoDB monitor in show engine InnoDB status uh, there is another section called la latest foreign, foreign key error and here again here you see the connection ID it's called again here thread ID and you see which connection has caused with this command sorry with this command the foreign key error then in the third section in the InnoDB monitor with the show engine InnoDB status command you have the running transactions so you can see there which transaction is running right now inside InnoDB and here again you have the connection ID it's called again here thread ID so you can see which connection actually is running which transaction. So that was the InnoDB monitor. Where else can we see or have information about connection IDs? The next thing I want to lo look at, uh, at it with you is the view on performance schema threads. Here we can do or we have to do the conversion between the MariaDB connection ID and the performance schema thread ID. So in this query we do on the performance schema threads view uh, we want to see the thread ID and the process list ID and to make it more clear I have renamed here the process list ID into connection ID which would be technically more correct term. So we see a slight gap in the numbers between a thread ID and the connection ID so don't mix up those two otherwise you will not get further results correctly. So in the performance schema where can we work with the process list ID? Uh, in the views session account connection attributes and section session connection attributes you can work with the process list ID. Then there are many different other views where you only can work with the real thread ID and not with the connection ID. I have listed all views here which I found where the thread ID is listed or is used. And then we have also related thread IDs like parent thread ID, owner thread ID, locked by thread ID, etc. etc. in the performance schema again. So here with the conversion from the connection ID to the thread ID you can see in various other views which connection or which thread has done what. Then related to the performance schema there is the SUS schema views. So also in the SUS schema uh, we have on many different places we have the thread ID but I've never found the connection ID there. So we need again to do the conversion from the connection ID to the thread ID to view the information in the SUS schema. So where, for example, do we have it? IO by thread by latency, so we can see IO latency by connection. File IO process list we already know, lock weights, etc. So here we can find out which connection caused some information in the SUS schema views. Then where can we use or where can we find the connection ID in the log files? So in the MariaDB error log, there the connection ID is also listened. It's here at the second position. This is the connection ID of your MariaDB connection. So you can easily find out which connection has caused this MariaDB error log warning. Then the next thing is in the slow query log. Here in the slow query log we see also the uh, connection ID again, here connection ID 34. Unfortunately it's called thread ID and not connection ID. 
uh, but we have just to rename uh, the column in our mind. And now comes the most interesting part. Up to here it was more or less boring technical information and now we glued together the whole puzzle. Uh, the general query log is the key point here. With the general query log we get an exact understanding of what is going on for each and every connection. So if we enable the general query log we see at what time here again the connection ID did it connect and then in this connection ID what has this connection done in the whole lifespan up to the quit to the end of the connection. So we can see what has a connection done and now with all the other information I just presented you uh, before we can figure out what's go what was going on in our system we can put together the whole puzzle. The general query log can be enabled on the fly with a command set global general log equals on. Um, if you do that on a production system be a little bit uh, careful because the size of the general query log can uh, grow quite quickly uh, to fill up your disk. So be careful, enable it on production if you have not enough space on the disk. Uh, some of our customers ask us uh, what about the overhead, what about the performance impact of the general query log. Uh, I could never clearly answer that so I did a little benchmark with a suspense OTP point select which is a read-only very very fast benchmark and in the this benchmark we found out that the overhead of the general query log is about 13 percent. So if you enable general query log mm, calculate with 10 to 15 percent overhead so if your system is nearly maxed out maybe you should be careful to enable the general query log on that system. What we also did is we designed a little data warehouse for um, evaluating all the queries in the general query log. Here is the uh, star model of this data warehouse and you see in the middle here uh, the queries itself, uh, the statements belonging to the queries, at what time the query has been executed, date and time of the query and to which connection it belongs and to which schema. So if we feed the general query log into this data warehouse structure we can do a lot of queries and find out uh, what query has interfered with what other query and make some uh, investigation of what went wrong on your system. Connection ID is also missing in some parts of MariaDB. So where are these parts? Uh, one thing I was looking at is the MariaDB SQL error log. And this is not the MariaDB error log, it's the SQL error log. For those who don't know, uh, this is a plugin you can enable on demand and this plugin logs all the errors which were sent from your MariaDB database to the client or to your application. So you as a DBA can see what errors did your applications receive from the database. So here a little hint to the MariaDB developers. Um, in the MariaDB SQL error log we don't see unfortunately the connection ID. So I opened a ticket here uh, at MariaDB and I even added a possible fix for that feature, uh, so I'm not really a programmer, so I don't know if my fix is good. But uh, the idea is also to add the connection ID to the SQL error log, so if you want to find out who was it, what did they, we can use the general query log in combination with the SQL error log to find out who got why this error message. Another 
uh, place where the connection ID is missing is in the binary locks. Here again, a, Maria, a hint to the MariaDB developers. Uh, would it not make sense also to add the connection ID to the MariaDB binary locks? I don't think it will cost much and harm much in the binary lock, but sometimes in troubleshooting, in combination with the general query lock, uh, it could help to find the connection ID also in the MariaDB binary locks. Then another feature we have in MariaDB is the MariaDB audit plugin. And in the audit plugin lock, there again, connection ID is added. It's here at, uh, I think it's the fifth position. This here again is the connection ID. I think this is the query ID, then the type and the query itself. So again here in the audit plugin, we can see the connection ID. Then another problem we have experienced sometimes with customers is InnoDB locking. So InnoDB locking uh, is not that easy um, because if you get an error message because of InnoDB lock wait timeout, and then it's already too late to find it out. And you cannot have a look all the time in the database what's going on and who is the opposite connection who blocks your connection. Uh, so there is a possibility to look in the information schema and in the performance schema which connection ID was waiting and which connection ID was blocking the waiting connection and in combination with a general query log or with some other queries you run on performance schema or information schema, you can easily find out not only the waiting connection, but also the blocking connection. So this is currently something we are still working on for some customers for found here a more easy solution. What problems could we have with the connection ID related to other technologies? So if your application is using connection pooling, uh, this is typically done by Java applications or .NET applications, uh, then your connection is shared between different application threads. So we see here, you have one thread in your application, you have your connection pool, the connection pool has a connection through your, in this example, JDBC driver to the database, gets a result, sends it back to the application, but here the data connections are shared between different application connections. So from the database side of you, at that side, we get different application parts for the same connection ID. So it makes it a little bit harder to find out from the general query log and the connection ID where in your application the problem was caused. So that's one thing you have to learn to deal with it. Then another thing, it's quite new. It does not yet happen in MariaDB, but possibly it will happen in the future. I don't know. Uh, in MySQL, since 8.0.14 release, uh, there is a variable called pseudo thread ID. So possibly this is implemented in MariaDB as well, sooner or later. I did not yet find out what really is the use case of this variable, but maybe other people know better. So this variable, pseudo thread ID, can be changed and it will influence the connection ID. So if you mess around with this variable, the numbers of your connection ID is probably not correct anymore or not what you expect anymore. I have here added also a link if you want to read a little bit more about uh, connection pooling. You can find out more under this link. So for those who are a little bit more about interesting things about MariaDB connection ID, I have listed here uh, additional literature about this variable. Uh, for example, a one blog post we have written recently is about aborting connections in MariaDB and 
with the connection ID, you can find out with connection, which connection was aborting at what part in the code. Then a uh, little bit more Galera related, uh, failing DDL commands, how you can uh, figure out which, which connection did or executed the failing DDL commands, another blog article here, or the base for this presentation, we also have written uh, a blog article about that. you find that as well on our website. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, I'm now here and free for questions and discussions. And if you are interested, we have some time for personal talks. Thank you very much and enjoy further FOSTEM in the MariaDB channel.